Welcome to the Audio Inc. Radio Podcast, featuring interviews with the biggest names in rock and metal. Hosted by Ann Erickson. Get inked. Visit Facebook.com slash Audio Inc. Radio, Twitter.com slash Audio Inc. Radio, and Audio Inc. Radio.com for more ink. Whew, that's a lot of ink. It's Audio Inc. Radio.com. As always, it's great to rock out with you. It's Ann Erickson on Audio Inc. Radio. And if you are a friend of the show, if you listen on a regular basis, first of all, you rock. Thank you very much. And also, you probably remember that last year I had on the show Jeff Schroeder from the Smashing Pumpkins, who is just an incredible guitarist and a great person, really great guy, very passionate about all things music and guitar. He can, this guy, he can play any kind of music and he just really lives it. He has that deep passion for guitar and music in general. Now, very happy to have Jeff from the Smashing Pumpkins back on the show, along with the very talented Tommy Mars out of Detroit. Gotta say Detroit representing here. Gotta love that, but really cool. The guys actually teamed up for a new track from Tommy, 15. And this track is doing amazingly well on iTunes. I mean, it got up to number three, right alongside all of these artists who have big labels. I mean, I'm just going to say it. He's independent and he is right on there alongside all of these artists on major labels because his fans, they really love his music that much and they love him as a person. And I have to say the track is awesome. 15, it tells a great story and I'll let him talk about that more, but it is a solid kind of poppy, dreamy song and I really dig it. Very happy to have both of them on the show. And just a reminder, if you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, what are you waiting for? You're breaking my heart. Go do it right now. Just search Ann Erickson or Ann Erickson on Audio Inc. wherever you rack out to podcast. Hit subscribe and you'll be instantly notified of the next big episode. And if you want to find me on social media, I would love to hear from you. And if you have an idea for a guest on the show, just hit me up. You can go to itsmeann.com. That's I-T-S-M-E-A-N-N-E.com. Itsmeann.com to link up on all of my social media, Twitter and Snapchat at Ann Erickson, Instagram and TikTok at Erickson Ann. All right, let's do it. Oh, wait, first, one quick plug for my band, Upon Wings. Check us out at uponwings.com. And now, finally, let's get into this great chat with Jeff and Tommy. Hi, this is Jeff Schroeder of the Smashing Pumpkins. This is Tommy Mars, and you're listening to Audio Inc. Radio with Ann Erickson. Congrats, of course, on the new track. And well, first of all, I kind of want to know a backstory about how you guys met and became friends. We met in L.A. at NAMM, uh, which was, uh, you know, the crazy thing with that is there's so many people there. And the fact that we kind of like connected and just kind of remained friends from there is for me, it feels unusual, but I think we connected just, we're talking about, you know, sushi and the best places to go in LA and stuff. And you know, Jeff is such a great person. He's like texting me, you know, places here, we'll check this one out, you know? So it kind of just started from there. Yeah. I, I you know, Tommy had originally interviewed uh, me and uh, for, uh, a, for a project I was launching at the time called Night Dreamer. And, um, you know, our, my manager said, <laughs> said, you know, this guy's, you know, Tommy Mars. And I'm like, dude, that dude from Frank Zappa's band? I, you know, I said, that's so weird that he has a podcast and wants to interview. But and then, so we had met Tommy at the NAMM, so we did the interview, and we just totally got on and then just kept in touch since then. Just because I think just, honestly, I mean, there's there's many things, but I think at the core of it is two music lovers. Yeah, you know, exactly. just really bonded over bands and songs and music and guitar players and, we do. We talked about like guitar players. So I think initially we we're talking about like some of our favorite guitar players, and then you know, unfortunately, you know, the King, you know, Eddie Van Halen passed away. And then I remember we hopped on a call and we were talking about it. But then, you know, as the conversation goes, you start to find out like you know some of your favorite players. We're talking about Warren D. Martini, you know, we start to bring up Marty Friedman and these great players, and then I think it just started blossoming from there too. How did you guys come about deciding to get together for this track? You know. Even before this, I think the first time Tom and I really worked together is we organized a benefit concert. Um, it was called For the Crew, where we put together um, 
just different sets to raise money for crew members that were out of work at the time. And in doing that, we actually collaborated on a few different tracks. And so we had a lot of fun and realized, like, hey, we can do this fairly easily uh, remotely, like many people found out that they could do during the pandemic, which is great. So it connects people like Tommy and I even uh, much easier than than before. And um, yeah, he just mentioned to me that he had this track he was working on and he thought it needed you know, a, a different type of guitar so than would normally go on, on this type of song. And um, and he basically wanted me to be 100% me, which for me is a plus because I didn't really have to try and play somewhat differently, even though the style or genre of music isn't what I normally play over. But he really gave me the freedom to do completely whatever I wanted. And and that was such a, a joy I mean, it was, you know, almost like too good to be true, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and um, it really didn't, you know, it, it was really just a few hours of, you know, and he sent me the track. I looped that section. And honestly, within like half hour, 40 minutes, I kind of mapped out what I want to do and then just took a few hours just to get all the right takes and whatnot. Um, because I don't really do a lot of cutting and pasting on, on Pro Tools. I, I, I like to get full performances. So I'll re- c- kind of compose something and then, you know, practice playing it so I can execute it as one piece. You know? And um, so, yeah, it was really, really just um, really a joy, I have to say. I, it was a lot, a lot of fun for me. Yeah, you know, he. Um, I was actually binge-watching Cobra Kai. Uh, cause I actually got Netflix just so I could watch Cobra Kai. So I'm binge watching it, and then you know my phone lights up, and he's like, "Hey, you know, I'm about to go and start recording this," and you know I just kind of I, I feel that excitement, and then there's a few hours later, he sent me some tracks, and I was just like, kind of do that thing, you know, where you sit up from the couch, you're like, "Wait, what is this?" You know, it was so awesome, <laughs> like I couldn't believe it, and I was like, "Okay, this is the perfect solo for this song." I mean, I I just couldn't have drummed it up any better than the way it, it sounded, and then you know you mix it in and. I uh, sent it over to our producer, ElectroPoint, on this, uh, who is just simply a, an amazing producer. And, um, you know, it's kind of the same thing, whereas I, I sent it to him, and I didn't hear back right away, and I was like, oh, maybe he hates it. But then the phone rings, and he's calling me. So that's when I knew. I was like, okay, so this thing is sweet, because normally Roman will just uh, text me or something, but he called me and was like, dude, <laughs> like this is, like, next level. And I was like, all right, all right, we're rolling. The track has done so well. I saw that it's been in like the top five of iTunes and stuff, which is amazing. So how does it feel to have this song so well received? Uh, It's it's an incredible feeling. You know, sometimes with these, with songs, I mean, you know how it is. And you you release a song and you you hopefully that it charts somewhere in iTunes. But, you know, it got to number three, which is, it is rarefied because most of the sales happen in the top five. That's where like the majority of the sales for that chart go. And when it got there, I was like, wow, this is just nuts, but, you know, here we are, this is what, it's been out four or five days, and it's still in the top ten, it's still selling every single day, it's selling, and it's just, it's an amazing thing, it feels great, because, you know, there's, it's getting into two dozen countries, and it's, it charted, now it's in five countries, it actually made the iTunes chart in five countries, it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, and this is, like, independent, right? I mean, you pretty much put yeah. this out on your own, wow, no, that's really rare. Yeah, I think what it shows, you know, Anne, is that, that and why I even like working with, with Tommy is that he has such a genuine connection with his fans. And they, you know, are so supportive of, of his musical projects and endeavors and even, you know, giving me so much love and attention over on social media, too. So I, I think, you know, it's really just a testament to actually working hard at, cultivating that relationship and you know it's i mean wow what a blessing to when you really song that people actually support it so much it, it's really cool and it, and it, i think it's a completely authentic grassroots um you know real people real fans you know no doctrine of anything it's pretty amazing they're they're i mean they call themselves the golden crew you know like they're they're just the best. I mean, they're just the best. And everybody's, of course, everybody's going to say, and it's true for everybody's, you know, kind of universe, but they're, it's the best crew ever, you know, and they're so supportive because it's not, you know, it's not even just, you know, making a purchase or whatever. It's that support of, I have to share this with people I know because I like it so much, or, you know, I believe you, you and Jeff is an artist and, um, 
you know, they're they're doing that grassroots thing, like Jeff said. It's they're getting out there and spreading the word, and um, you know, sharing social media posts, and um, and not even on top of that, though, I'll say just the DMs. You know, I'm getting kind of like off of the timeline. Uh, just that support. I mean, you just couldn't ask for anything better. And to be true, without sounding too you know weepy about it, there's a couple times where I was like, I couldn't even respond right away because it was it was so heartfelt, and I was like, gosh, you know what? Everybody wants to charge. Of course, you want to charge, you want to play shows, but at the core of it, without sounding too cheesy, and that's what it's about. You touch somebody's life with some lyrics, oh man, it isn't getting better than that. One hundred percent agree, and I mean. I love the dreamy kind of texture of the track and the pop vocals with the cool guitars and the lyrics, like you mentioned. So what kind of story did you want to tell with the lyrics? Well, you know, it was, I think a lot of people have probably gone through this, you know, being, you're 15 years old. So just like, you're not exactly, you know, driving yet, you know, have a driver's license and stuff, have your own car. And, you know, you, you find that person. And then of course that person's, you know, in this case, you know, from this experience is the father gets a job in a different state. So, you know, your first inclination when you're a teenager, probably a young teenager, is to run away. You know, it's kind of like the first thing you think, we'll just run away together. And then, you know, you get to the middle of the woods and you're like, yeah, this is probably not the best idea. So you, you turn around and you say goodbye and, and, you know, you're seeing, in my case, you know, seeing her eyes staring at me, almost getting smaller as the car is driving away. And it's like, you know, how do you put that story into words enough where people understand what you're saying, but not make it too wordy? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, it was kind of a struggle a little bit because I have a whole page of words actually for that song and I had to kind of trim it down. But it was just kind of that, you know, that remember those times that I didn't want to be sad. It was more of a, I, I just hope that, you know, my kid, I hope she turned out okay. You know, I hope everything worked out for both of us, even though you, you miss those times when you think about it. I think it's something a lot of people can relate to as well. Yeah, and that, that's the hope. You know, you really hope that somebody hears it and thinks back, maybe to a memory they put in the corner of their mind somewhere, you know, and it, it kind of comes out and they have that, you know, couple minutes of, ah, oh, man, that was something else when I was a kid, you know? Mm-hmm. Like a stand by me moment. <laughs> Right, yeah. And Jeff, you're such a versatile guitar player. I mean, you can really play anything, and your playing does fit perfectly on here, even though, like you mentioned, it's not exactly the style that you usually uh, perform. So I don't know. How do you how do you do that? How do you morph into different sounds like that? Um, well, I try not to think about my genres and stuff too much, and I feel like I try to play mo- mostly from the heart and have something to say kind of musically. And then once I start there, then I'll look for maybe a style or, or a technique or an approach that, that fits like what, what wants to happen emotionally, you know, but I really, you know, think melodically too. And that's what actually one of the greatest, you know, um, lessons that I've learned from working with someone like Billy Corgan for so many years. And who, you know, if you think about even the Smashing Pumpkins, like it's such a wide, diverse array of styles from folky acoustic to full-blown electronic to heavy metal and everything in between <laughs> so um, I think having that approach is um, and not being scared to kind of be out of my element and fusing things that wouldn't normally go together are actually exciting to me so when Tommy sent me this show I was I was like let me add it <laughs> yeah it's a lot of fun for me to try and put things together you know that often like I said nor- don't normally go together and it's fun and you know and I think that there's you know in the song itself there's a bit of healthy nostalgia you know fondly thinking back um, you know about this time in, in your life and you know I think when you in why people are resonating with the song is it, it's kind of a nostalgia with you know where you, you may be smiling in your mind when you think about maybe that special moment and for me, I think about, you know, there was a time in music where pop music would have big guitar solos. Yeah, and like some of the top players in the industry, whether it's Steve Lukather or these session guys that play these big solos. And, you know, a few days before I, I cut it, I was, you know, I, I went into a Starbucks to grab a copy and I heard some pop song had this completely ripping guitar solo. And it was, you know, obviously new. And I thought, well, this is a good sign, so I'm just going to totally have fun and totally go for it. (laughs) So that's just what I did. 
Yeah, I think that's something people forget about. They think about pop music and they forget that a lot of great pop music is guitar centric, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, of course, you know, we were talking about a little bit of Van Halen before and, you know, Michael Jackson, you know, did it, you know, very early with Beat It and, you know, had a completely ripping solo in a, in a huge pop hit. Do you guys have any plans to do more stuff together? Good question. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, boy. I you know, I, we, I, I, I don't... You know, we had no plan to take over the world or anything. <laughs> it, was, it was just, he said, hey, I got this song, and I really think, you know, I want you to contribute to it. And then um, we had so much fun doing it and working with an Electro Point, the producer, that we all said, hey, let's let's do something else. So... We definitely have an idea and a concept for a, kind of like a summer song mm-hmm. that come out. Like that would be like a, you know, that you know, a, a continuation of, of fifteen, but also um, kind of taking taking it in a, in a slightly different direction. That would, like I said, tailored towards the summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, so I guess I think the the kids would say a, a summer banger. I, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. A summer banger. (laughs) So, I mean, this track isn't really, I wouldn't call it like alternative rock or anything, but I'm curious because you guys, you know, you're really in the scene. What are your thoughts on the state of alternative rock music today? And what do you really think is alternative anymore? Uh, Wow, that's a a good question because I, you know, I think, um, you know, and speaking completely honest, you know, I think with a band, say, that I'm in, Smashing Pumpkins, which was very definitive of a certain era of alternative rock, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and being a, muse- a museum piece isn't really our forte. So we have always juggled and, and had to figure out how do you maintain something of your core sound style, but also... Um, investigate new territory and for better for worse we've always done that you know and i mean like for worse meaning like some people haven't always got like why we've done certain things that we've done um but yeah that's just how we are but but that being said i think that we're also very wary of too of that we don't want to you know be imitating also sometimes like certain types of new trends so you know when i turn on the radio and i listen to like k-rock out here in la and, and if I'm, I'm around and i listen when i hear new songs that are quote unquote alternative they're very different in mindset and mentality than than something that we would do and i think the influences and the amalgamations and the juxtaposition of styles and stuff is actually quite different and but there's seems to be actually some pretty exciting stuff um and then you know last thing i'll say is I've actually, now that I've been out here in LA for a couple of years, I've, I've started producing a lot of bands out here. And so I've been working, I've done like two albums now with, with younger bands. And it's so interesting, like what they're into and um, how there's a, a def, you know, a direct lineage to say like the alternative music that, that I'm very familiar with, you know? Um, and so I don't know, it's, I don't. I. I don't, would never go so far as to say I think that there's a resurgence, but I still think that it's. Um, it's still pretty healthy out there for sure. There's mm-hmm. still, you know, lots of. And out here in LA, there's lots of lots of guitar bands. You know, indie alternative guitar bands, and it's, it's really fun. Yeah. What about you, Tommy? Uh, I think you said well. You know, I think the only thing I'll say is, uh, I, like, the, if you look at the core of alternative music, you know, when I was a kid, you know, not to date myself too much, but yeah, like, what was it? Uh, I think whatever. The 89 station is, it was like called 88.7 Ohm FM. So they played new wave. They played alternative stuff. So you heard the Durand, you heard, you know, Depeche and, and the Cure and stuff. And that was like, it was almost like alternative. So, you know, alternative morphs. But the only thing I'll say about new styles is, <laughs> and this is I don't want to make you guys mad or anything, but what we pass off as rock and roll today, it's, it's breaking my soul. That's the only thing I'll say. It's breaking my soul. <laughs> That's it. You know, and you know what's interesting is what's something that I add that you know, that I've kind of um, come across now that I've been, like I said, working with new bands is that I think is maybe somewhat um, shows like a like a, the difference in approach is that like say I 
originally, you know, came from something like I was into a lot of like UK and British shoegaze bands. And mm -hmm. if you started a band in the nineties was that you kind of, you were very much in that lane. And now, even though I'll be working with like this one band I'm working with out here called Living War and at heart, they are like at a, you know, they write, they're kind of a folk duo that's kind of done in the alternative rock. And that's still the essence of their music, but they want, I think, and we're exploring like, that shoegaze textures and sounds but not being a shoegaze band mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's mm -hmm. it's weird like so they're take but they're just breaking off bits and pieces of things that they like and then kind of grafting it on to to what they do and you know and, and even and so that's kind of creating new new sounds and new um amalgamations which is you know kind of what we kind of what happened in the 90s too you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. it's just a different set of influences and styles so um but i do notice things like that yeah that's a good point i mean i do think yeah. sometimes i'll hear a band say that oh we're alternative and i'm like you have no guitar player like how can you you know <laughs> how can know, you be an alternative right? rock band like i just don't get it but at the same time what is alternative i mean it's doing something different doing something against the norm i just don't think alternative music should be something that would be like in an ad for laundry detergent some of these songs are so like almost they sound almost like kids tracks and like oh I want a little like a little rawness to it you know <laughs> a little angst yeah no I hear you I, I hear you yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I feel that too <laughs> aside from this project what's next for both of you Tommy and then Jeff you know with the pumpkins and stuff uh well for me is uh you know really trying to write another great track um you know working with Jeff and Electro Point I'm yeah, you know, it's a challenge in a in a great great way. You know, it makes me do that thing that that I kind of do when I'm writing a song. I try to when I say research, I don't mean like learning like lines or anything. What I mean is like listening to like who I think are the best songwriters. So in this case, for this song here, I went and I was down the rabbit hole of Taylor Swift's catalog because I think she paints a story and she kind of like formats a song I, I, almost better than anybody. I mean, she can make you visually be in that place. And I'm not talking about being a fan of her music or catchy or not catchy. I mean, I'm talking about just from a songwriting standpoint and, you know, going to back and listen to like, um, Billy Joel, like, uh, was it street like Serenade? you know, those kind of records where there's just some really specific type storytelling there. And that's kind of what was 15. So I'm looking forward to working with Jeff again and, and electro point and having that challenge of, okay, so where am I going to go now? What rabbit hole am I going to go down? and try to get into that moment or am I going to travel somewhere for a couple of days and just, yeah, I mean, it sounds crazy, but you know, taking my acoustic guitar and going renting or go with Airbnb now, you know, going somewhere for a couple of days and just writing. Uh, that's, I think that's what's next. I always thought it would be a, another singer songwriter EP, but I'm kind of trapped into this right now. I, I can't wait to create more and, and tell more stories. Cause I just like storytelling. I, I really enjoy the process. Um, well, uh, you yeah, know, I am, um... Like as mentioned earlier, I'm leaving tomorrow uh, to start rehearsals for about a four and a half week, five week long Smashing Pumpkin tour, and we're super excited um, for this. I mean, we played two shows in September, but those were kind of pre-COVID makeup dates. So this is like our first um, kind of extended tour in in such a long time. So just really excited about that. Um, I've been working on the set at home and. And it's going to be a lot of good surprises for the fans out there for that. Um, I think the approach to this tour is, and, and we're calling it Rock Invasion 2, which I think the, can't remember the first one was some early 90s. So it's going to be a, basically where, where um, I think our reaction is very similar to yours. And they're like, like where the guitar is, come to our show, you'll find the guitar. <laughs> so uh, nice. We're going to be rocking hard. <laughs> So, um, so that, um, and then you know, I can't say too much, but we're going to have some pretty exciting announcements, you know, kind of at some point during the tour as well, um, pertaining to the rest of the year. And so it's a really exciting time for us. So I'm just excited to be, um, doing what I do, which is, you know, play guitar and perform and stuff. Yeah. Do you guys have new music still in the works? I know we had talked about it last time. Oh, pumpkins. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The yeah, pumpkins. yeah, 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 yeah. 
we do. So that's why I said I think there'll be some announcements soon in regards to things like that and, and stuff. But yeah, mm-hmm. nothing I can give details on quite yet. But yeah, yeah, that we finished, you know, that big epic album <laughs> we were working on. Right, so. right. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah. I know it must feel really good for both of you to get back on tour and in front of people. Finally, I mean, some bands kind of did it throughout the pandemic, but it's not the same, you know, and now it's like more free and open and stuff. I mean, hopefully, God willing, we're post pandemic, but you know what I mean to have more of a traditional tour. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's a little bit I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I'm like, Actually, right before I was in the garage getting out the suitcase and stuff and going, all right, <laughs> how do I act for being gone this long? <laughs> it's like I forgot how to do it. No, yeah, I'm excited for sure. Yeah, is there anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, I think just uh, I'm excited too, like to get out there and like get in front of people and then, you know, to, to meet. Um, I, I did a thing in New York where, you know, uh, it actually was in October, so we're still kind of in it, but I did a special, just a VIP session for like the really, really, I would say the really support base of what I do and stuff. And, you know, the, every, all the spots were filled like immediately, like within two minutes. And, you know, I was in a kind of a weird position to, you know, add second and third shows and stuff. And, um, you know, being in right in Manhattan and, uh, it was, it made me miss, touring and maybe miss playing shows you know all that stuff and it's just like also getting that interaction uh you know with everybody and i mean we went out for drinks after <laughs> Man, let's just go hang let's just everybody you know it's a different time let's just go hang after the show you know <laughs> and um you know for me getting out there to, and to see people's face and, and talk with them about you know these songs uh i just can't wait to do it I can't wait well awesome thanks you guys thanks. and congrats thanks. again on all the success yeah i was I mean, I listened today and it sounds amazing. I love that track. And you know what? I feel kind of that Taylor Swift, not like vibe really, but the songwriting thing. I totally agree that she's a great songwriter and tells a story. And I feel like this track really does that. So, Oh, thank you. Jeez, that's very nice to hear. Thank you. (laughs) Big thanks to Jeff and Tommy. Thank you for being great guests on my show. And check out that new track, 15. I mean, it's got that great songwriting. It tells a story. It's poppy. I kind of feel like it is a summer feeling song, even though the guys are going to work on a summer banger, as they say. This, I feel like it has a really great spring and summer vibe, and it just tells a heartfelt story. Check it out. And looking forward to new music from both of them. Very cool. Jeff, of course, with the Smashing Pumpkins and Tommy on his own. Really great to talk with both of them. And these guys, I mean, they know their music. They're both extremely talented musicians. Check out their entire catalog. I promise that you will not be disappointed. It's Ann Erickson on Audio Inc. Radio. And hey, as always, that was a fun show. And if you want to be part of more fun shows, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Just search Ann Erickson or Ann Erickson on Audio Inc. wherever you rock out to podcast. Hit subscribe and that's it. It's free. It's fun. I promise. And it is basically, I talk about music on the show and we interview the biggest names in rock and metal. Just like you and me hanging out, talking with rock stars, talking about something that brings everyone together, which is music. Music is universal and I believe it truly does bring everyone together. And if we are not friends online yet, check me out, follow me. I will follow back. Just hit me up. Send me a message when you do. Head to itsmean.com. That's I-T-S-M-E-A-N-N-E.com. Itsmean.com to link up on all of my social media, Twitter and Snapchat at Ann Erickson, Instagram and TikTok at Erickson Ann. It is that easy. And finally, if you haven't checked out my band yet, Upon Wings, head to uponwings.com. And I was really flattered because before the interview, actually, Tommy said that he checked out our new track, Scars, and that he dug it. So that's a big compliment. Thank you, Tommy. And you can check that out, you, right now at uponwings.com. All right, until next time, be safe, God bless, and we'll rock soon. Ann Erickson on Audio Inc. Radio.
It's Audio Inc. with Anne. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Audio Inc. radio podcast. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. Get inked online at audioincradio.com. I'm Anne Erickson for the Audio Inc. radio podcast.